Welcome everyone, thank you for tuning in to episode 11 of the Kenshi Let's Struggle. Starting off this episode, we had a raid from the Band of Bones show up at our front gate. Now, they decided to just run around, and I had all my people at the front gate, so I had to send them to the back gate. I still need to get around to fixing this, I was too lazy this episode. But I unequipped all my guys of their backpacks, I put all the iron ore that they had on them in the storage crates, and I make sure everyone's as prepared as possible as the Band of Bones are tough ones to go against. Having just as high stats as most of our top tier units in our group, along with if we lost this battle, there was the chance of them taking over our base, which would be horrible. <laughs> now our team are all fighting them and we're all getting our asses kicked honestly. Now with most of our party knocked out, B01 would be waking up fighting them one by one, and this way he would slowly be able to outskill the bandits from the band of bones now they left and this let us finally heal up i got everybody healed back up to normal and b01 was running in and out of the building putting people in beds i didn't know the rescue function actually in this game like i always did this manually so after 200 hours just seeing a full room of people Put in there in like 30 seconds it really made me love b01 even more once a fair amount of them healed up i got them all to run over to the training house that way that they could get their stats up that they needed i also had some people go over to the way station that way we could get some more prosthetic limbs as we had lost a shit ton from that one panza bone battle now at our outpost there was a beast trader from the nomads and i bought a bull which i renamed to bullseye and then a garu which i renamed to gary the garu so we now have two pack beasts in our group which is nice and i was thinking oh this is great you know i'll be able to transport all these different goods a lot farther a lot faster and then immediately a fight breaks out i remembered after the recording that uh, i think we have negative standing with the nomads so this probably could have caused the uh, aggression, but the one nomad started fighting us, and it was only him and his pack beast, but our people were getting taken the fuck down, even limbs flying off the odd time, and it was terrifying. B01 ended up finally knocking out the nomad though, finally, and it was just because of that that uh, we survived. I don't know what would have happened if he didn't. The other nomad though would not go down so easy and with Beefbok getting up and injured he ran over to try and help. He got hit two or three times and Beefbot had died. Along with that Hobbs was also dead a few seconds later and it was just B01 finished up the, la the last nomad and with that poor little Beefbot lied on the battlefield dead alongside with Hobbs. Now on the way out, we recruited a robot and I customized him to my pleasing and named him Beefbot. People were training and researching and mining and we were slowly making progress. Definitely came in clutch and saved everyone. If we would have lost this one, I think our whole party probably would have been dragged off to a slave camp. Now, rest in peace to Beefbot. He, he will be strongly missed. Hobbs won't be missed as much because Beefbot was, uh... He meant a lot to us, but rest in peace to both of them. Sadly, we had to move on and we had to see the casualties that had occurred from the Nomad attack. And it was strong, there was a lot of people knocked out again, everybody was damaged, beat up. And I decided to throw the Nomad and a couple of his pack beasts inside, a beak thing in a bowl. And when talking to the Nomad, he instantly agreed to just join up with me thankfully and i renamed him to a creme now a creme had high stats i mean almost 70s high 60s and just about all the important stuff so he was he he was stronger than b01 in his stats which was amazing i had not seen a unit like this this that's probably why he he killed beef bot and a uh, hobbs after this we had a caravan visit show up to our part outpost and I sold a little bit of iron and grabbed some other materials we needed to continue to construct the rest of the training house. 
I also had sent B01 to the way station, that way he could grab some limbs. He had to grab a new leg for Shaggy because Shaggy's other leg had now f <laughs> been lost in combat. So Shaggy's about two fifths a uh, skeleton now, which is crazy. While B01 was finishing that up, a slave raid had arrived at our base, and this was terrifying as um, B01 wasn't there. And even like God the Goat, a very weak unit I haven't put too much time into, he's just been mining, but he stood his own against a few of these. Like they, he put in his uh, his work against um, the units. And I could see that a lot of my guys were um, actually quite strong. The whole time I was struggling, I didn't realize I had everyone in the training building still training instead of outside fighting while I was wondering why we were outnumbered so easily. Now, Akrem, this is where he started to show off his true potential. He, one by one, started chopping down fucking slavers, left and right, knocking them out. I haven't, like, I never even saw B01 destroy the enemies as fast as this, you know? B01, he's got a lot more health and defense, I'd say, though. And it look, it Krem's more like a glass cannon. He's got a little bit less health, but he's still got high defenses and high attacks, knocking out slavers left and right. That entire time, too, he was one shot. He, he could have taken one shot to the chest at any moment and just died, but he was blocking almost every single hit, probably taking out at least a dozen slavers. Now, it came down to him being knocked out when four of them had ganged up on him and he ended up slipping and not being able to block an attack this left to b01 and the others to fight them but they were all pretty hurt too and it was very hard for him to get back up and try and save the others but b01 would prevail just as he always does against the slave traders following them down the trail as we try and take away our party members b01 would chop them the fuck down <laughs> it's always it, it, it's one of my favorite things just watching b01 individually go after a slave trader that has his friend and chop him down and then go to the next one chop him down it's it's an undescribable um sense of joy now during this i go inside and there is a fucking black ninja genin raid and this isn't good because we had to deal with this on top of having to deal with a fucking sl the slave raid and our people being taken away. They still had two or three of our guys. Like, this wasn't good. Luckily, a creme would wake up and knock out about three of them before being put back down. He was getting knocked out really easily just because he was one shot the entire, like, day I had him, but... He did put in a lot of work, and him and B01, I feel like, um, were definitely the causing uh, key factors to us winning a lot of these battles. Like, I couldn't imagine what would have happened if B01 hadn't have picked up a creme and put him in the cage. But tracking down one of the slave traders near the hub, B01, knocked him down and freed our other party member. And we still had one left, unfortunately. They were so far up the map. B01 couldn't just make it there by running and carrying the person who he had saved because they were missing a limb. So he had to drop them and just let them crawl back, hopefully, and go to the slave trader and save Atef. Once we did get everyone back to the base, I was looting up the remaining Black Ninja Genians and other people for their weapons and other stuff that I could go and sell easily at the way station because we were, we were pretty low on cats at this point. Going to the way station, I would bought new limbs for the third time this episode because we had lost more limbs from another raid. And this time it, it was good because at least at least we were getting everybody healed up. It didn't say we had another raid for another day or so, so this would give me plenty of time to get people trained up, get stuff built and progress done. That way we can move on to other things sooner. I had the farms all upgraded to the max that they could, and they were running really smoothly. Cactus, wheat, and hemp just about all we really need in the long run to not only get food get fabrics and hash and we can make grog now i had b01 go and explore the tiny settlement to the east 
and upon arriving there, I it was just like dead. There's nothing there, no, no building materials, no books, nothing. So I went back to the base and I put down a few new farms, one for the cactus, one for the wheat straw, and then a material trader showed up. So I traded with him and got a lot more materials, a lot more cactus, a lot more wheat straw and hemp. And this would allow me to not only put in a cactus farm to the right of a wheat straw, we could place in a hemp farmland and begin to mass grow hemp at a faster rate. And with that, it brings us to day 63 of our Kenshi Let's Struggle. I hope you guys are all enjoying the series. I might start live streaming either the se this series or other playthroughs of Kenshi. If you guys are interested in that, let me know in the comment section below. I also want to really thank you guys for all the support on the series. Without all the support, I don't think I'd be putting these episodes out as fast as I am, but I'm really eager to put every episode out and go back to playing. I'm probably gonna hop back on the Kenshi once this video is all done rendering and uploading, so thank you guys for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't, and leave a comment and a like. And with that, thank you very much, and take it easy. Peace.